Hi, this is the Saturday evening update on Hurricane Ida. As always, the thoughts in this video are mine alone, and in making decisions, please consult the National Hurricane Center and your local weather office and local officials for the best information for where you are. Well, here's the hurricane in the Gulf of Mexico. This is southeast Louisiana here at the top, Florida on the right, and unfortunately we see a mature looking hurricane developing and moving toward the central Gulf Coast. Ida has been intensifying since it came off of Cuba at a fairly steady pace. It has not been an explosive pace yet, and it's been a process of waiting to see when a coherent eye wall that is closed, a closed ring of deep thunderstorms, forms coherently around the center. As the sun nears its setting time here this afternoon on Saturday evening, we can see that there's convective bursts on the west side that have been firing and starting to rotate more around the east and north sides now, and the core has become a little bit better defined in recent hours as the storm is moving toward the northwest. This is the infrared enhancement showing the deep convection in a better way, and you can see that the expanse of black and gray shading around the eye has become a little bit more complete in coverage over the last several hours. For a long time this morning, there were gaps in that black area around the eye, and only one side had deep convection. That coverage has been improving over the last several hours, and we are seeing a little bit of warming of the cloud tops in the eye, indicating that it is starting to clear out. It is not clear yet, and you can tell that from visible because it's still kind of milky in appearance. You cannot see the ocean surface here. So this is not yet fully cleared out and matured, but it is unfortunately on its way to maturity. And right now it's, it's moving into some of the warmest water in its path. There's a very strong eddy of warm water somewhere to its northwest here, and the storm will be moving near or over the eastern side of that as it moves on this northwest path over the next 12 hours or so tonight. And we could see a quickening of the pace of intensification during that time. We just had a new plane arrive in the storm, and what it found on the first pass was a pressure at 974 or 973 millibars, and that was already about 10 or 12 millibars lower than the prior mission several hours before, indicating that the storm had been strengthening fairly steadily between the aircraft missions. It just passed through the center a second time before I started recording, and the pressure was about 3 millibars lower at 970 or 971, indicating that this is strengthening at a steady pace now. That pressure fall came in about 80 minutes which indicates a, a pretty healthy rate of deepening. And right now the winds are estimated by NHC at 105. So far the plane has not found anything quite that high. It found winds of about 90 in the northeast eyewall on the first pass, and it just went through the northern eyewall and found winds of about 95, maybe close to 100 miles per hour at the surface. So this is a Category 2 hurricane and intensifying. And these positions are currently showing a northwest heading. One thing to note here is that the storm is placed slightly to the northeast of where the original track forecast was. So the original track was something like this. The storm is just a little bit to the northeast of that now. And so the concern is that this could lead to a track that's closer to New Orleans, which is up here. The alleged the edge of Lake Pontchartrain is showing up on your map there. And so something a little bit closer to New Orleans could occur if this northeastward wobble persists. And that's something we'll be watching for short-term impact changes. But overall, the track is similar in character to what we've known will happen, this track into southeast Louisiana. And there will be severe impacts felt all through the New Orleans, Baton Rouge, Morgan City area, regardless of exactly where the landfall point is. And that brings me to the fact that the wind field uh, is starting to grow a little bit in size and has become a little wider since the last recon mission. And that wider wind field is going to be pushing water on shore and storm surge is a huge concern in southeast Louisiana. As Louisianans know, it is a very storm surge prone region. One thing we'll be watching for as this intensifies overnight tonight and tomorrow morning will be whether or not we see development of a concentric band of wind around the eye wall. So right now we have the primary ring. It's possible that we'll get banding like we see here to wrap all the way around and form a second ring, an outer wind maximum that could potentially induce an eye wall replacement cycle prior to landfall. If that happens, and they're hard to predict so we don't know, but if it happens, it typically brings the maximum winds in the inner eye wall down a little bit from their peak, but it also causes a tremendous broadening of the wind field. So you get some good results there with less wind, but it gets worse because the storm surge is worse because the wind field is larger and you get a, a bigger area experiencing strong wind 
and storm surge. So we'll see if that happens. That'll change things maybe a little bit if we see that, but those are typically difficult to see coming until they're already occurring. So we'll see updates on that tomorrow uh, once we see the storm near peak intensity. Now here's the water vapor satellite loop. And uh, the storm is still embedded in an area of pretty light shear, minimal vertical shear currently present. We can see outflow expanding well to the west here, well to the north, and well to the southeast. And this is a, a healthy environment for a hurricane to be intensifying in. And with the warm water underneath that we know is there, there's really nothing standing in the way. If there's been anything limiting the intensification rate today, it's been irregularities in the eyewall. I noted that it has not been a complete eyewall for most of the day. And that may be the only thing that's preventing the intensification rate from being explosive, but it has been steady and seems to be quickening. So we are seeing this intensification toward what is likely to be a major hurricane that is winds of about 115 miles per hour or higher. It's already got winds of at least 100, so it seems uh, quite likely that this will be at least a Cat 3 or 4 hurricane near landfall. Now here's that ocean eddy I showed you. The storm is moving over that area now, so we're, we're coming up on the eastern edge of the eddy where the storm currently is. And as it moves toward landfall, it will eventually leave the eddy, and so it's possible that it'll reach its peak intensity right on the north edge of the eddy, eddy. and then whether it continues intensifying over the shelf water, we will have to see. The shelf water is shallower, and so can be cooled, but the storm won't be moving that slowly here, so it may not matter and the storm could be intensifying right until landfall. And we won't be able to tell you exactly how strong the winds will be. Right now, NHC forecasts them to be up to 130 at landfall. And again, the details there don't matter a whole lot. Cat 3, Cat 4 won't matter a whole lot to you because the impacts are likely to be severe regardless of what those numbers exactly are. This is the GFS upper level wind forecast showing the, uh, the storm over Louisiana by Sunday evening, and I'm showing you this because right now wind shear is pretty light. By the time of landfall, there will be some mild westerly wind aloft hitting the system from the left-hand side. That's unlikely to prevent the storm from intensifying near landfall, but it could matter because it could make the east side the side where most of the rain is falling. And we could see, you know, usually the west side is a little bit thinner, and you typically see strong winds and rain extend much less to the west of the storm than you do to the east where it could extend for quite a distance and the shear from the west helps that east side become larger and so again even though the track may come up through louisiana we could see this whole corridor near into the east of landfall see a lot of rain as rain bands extend well to the east and train over the same area and inland flooding even well inland over mississippi is going to be quite a concern here this is the NHC forecast updated as of 4 p.m. Central Time on Saturday. This is where the storm currently is. You can see the current size of the tropical storm force wind field that is winds greater than about 40 miles per hour. You can see that there. So again, you can see that's wider than the cone. So you have to translate this circle onto the landmass, and it will likely be larger than the circle currently is now by the time it makes landfall. And that'll be the area experiencing strong wind. And again, there is some some wiggle room here in where exactly the landfall point will be. It could be farther toward the Mississippi mouth, or it could be closer to Vermilion Bay. It really depends on the wobbles, and hurricanes do wobble in ways that we can't exactly predict. But either way, regardless of where exactly it crosses the coastline, we're expecting a large area of strong winds. Hurricane warnings are in effect for all of southeastern Louisiana. Tropical storm force winds could extend farther west along the Louisiana coastline towards Lake Charles, and then tropical storm warnings to the east through Mobile Bay to the Alabama-Florida border as well. And now storm surge, the big deal here, this is the peak values currently forecast by NHC. They've gone up for southeastern Louisiana 10 to 15 feet. This maximum could shift. You could get higher values here if the track is farther to the east, and you could get stronger values toward Vermilion Bay and Morgan City if the track is farther to the west. So those wobbles will matter in terms of the peak surge near and just east of the eye is where the storm surge is likely to be strongest but you can see it extends even well to the east of the landfall point here with water rises several feet above normally dry ground possible even as far east as mobile bay and even on the back side here you know you can get wind offshore pushing water in directions it's not supposed to move and flooding normally dry ground so Ocean water, the biggest threat to life. Most deaths in hurricanes occur due to storm surge. So if you've been issued an evacuation order, please heed it and please leave as this is the most dangerous hazard. 
We're going to be looking again at rainfall as well, and flash flooding potential is high across this whole corridor, encompassing most of Mississippi, southeast Louisiana, especially near and just east of the landfall point. We'll see tremendous rain rates. We could see over a foot of rain in some of these locations. And again, as the track is bending slightly to the right here and turning northeastward as the storm moves inland, that makes the east side of the track even more likely to see additional amounts of rain than you normally would if the track was, say, a straight line. And the storm will be slowing down a little bit as well as it moves inland after landfall to under maybe 10 miles per hour or so forward speed. So it won't be racing through here, and so it will have time to dump a lot of water. The soil is already soggy here due to a wet season. And so flash flooding well inland from the coastline will be a concern even if the winds are not that strong by the time it gets way up here into Mississippi. Here's one more graphic showing you the cone of probability of where tropical storm force winds greater than about 40 could occur. Everything within yellow is about a 30% chance or greater that you could get strong winds capable of causing power outages, etc. And you can see quite sizable here, again, much larger than the NHC cone that shows where the eye is going, which is very thin. But remember, impacts extend well beyond this. This only shows you where the center of the storm is likely to track. All right, well, I will have another update perhaps tomorrow morning uh, on this storm as it will be near landfall at uh, the time when I will be waking up here in Hawaii. And everyone stay safe. This is going to be mostly up to your local officials and National Weather Service forecast office to tell you what to expect in your particular area. Everyone who's in an evacuation zone should be leaving if you've been told to do so as it is for your safety. Most Louisianans know the drill at this point. You've had a lot of hurricanes over the last few years. And it's really unfortunate. Our thoughts are with you. Please stay safe. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.